Hi everyone, Game 9 of the 1983 Candidates a quarterfinal match between Gary Kasparov and Alexander Beliovsky. At this point, the match is already um, uh, wrapped up um, and uh, Kasparov has won uh, three games. Beliovsky has won one. And um, here, uh, this match, this game right here, uh, Kasparov has white pieces and um, one uh, draw for Kasparov would uh, put the match away officially. So Belioski, um needing needing desperately to win and not able to really make any uh, headway against Kasparov with the black pieces, ops for uh, the Bononi. Bishop d7, a4. So Kasparov plays the Benoni himself, especially at this time. And he opts for a really solid line. He knows he doesn't really need to press or try hard, but um, he wants to lure Beliovsky into overpressing. Well, his moves are pretty standard. H3. Again, the main idea is concepts. I mean, this is a super general idea in the Benoni. Is that white basically wants to calm down black's activity. Black wants to be active, active, active in the Benoni. And white wants basically to calm, uh, put out the fire, right? Or not let a fire get started, right? With um, black having all this activity. And just slowly exploit the uh, weaknesses that uh, black has in the position. Now this is more like uh, what you call <clears throat> after these moves e6 bishop f4 e5. This is what you call now like a Schmid Benoni, where you have the uh, formation of the pawns on c5, d6, and e5. This is not like your uh, modern Benoni. So play is somewhat different as with the lock nature of the position play uh, transfers uh, to the uh, flanks and this is good if you need a win because um, usually pieces aren't traded off in mass as would be uh, in more open positions so it gives you um, you know more options to strategically outplay uh, your opponent here so bishop g5 bishop c8 Knight d2 and now h6 bishop h4 g5 bishop g3 and we see um, Belioski trying to um, attack black now on the king uh, excuse me attack white on the king side h takes g3 g4 excuse me knight takes g4 f3 and knight f6 and now bishop h4 just simply placing the pin on the knight to the queen now again white is just kind of just playing in this pretentious manner allowing white black to do all this stuff to overextend himself and then he just picks up picks apart the weaknesses so basically black He's putting himself in a position where he has to win by attack, right? If the attack doesn't work, then he has all types, all these weaknesses, in the pawns and stuff like that. So, for black, here comes king h8, and then the rook to the g file, and hopefully he can mate uh, somehow. Knight e2, c3 is coming to kick this <clears throat> knight off of b4. Knight e6. And knight g3. And queen f8. Freeing up the knight on f6. But Kasparov's pieces are strateg strategically placed for defense. For instance, the knight on g3 eliminates any prospect of a black 
swinging his knight to f4 via h5. Knight d1, knight df1, I'm sorry. And this knight wants to go to e3, and then white can now exploit the pawn, the pawn weakness left behind at e f at uh, f4 and f5. And this was what I was talking about is that once black kind of shoots his, his load, so to speak, then the pawn the pawn weakness and the square weakness left behind can be readily exploited by white. Knight h7. Knight e3. Now bishop f6. Of course, uh, white will welcome the trades. And now knight g f5. Knight h5. So we can see that the knights come in f4. But black, excuse me, white as well defended against this. King f2. Bishop takes f5. Knight takes f5. And the simple idea is just to, behind that exchange, is to remove the defender of g3. But um, black uh, this just does not have enough. Knight f4, g3, again. Easy, easy parry to the, uh, these uh, threats. Desperation, rook takes g3, knight takes g3, queen g7. And just simply brings the rook over. He says, hey, I'll give back the exchange, no big deal. Rook g8. And then just simply queen d2. Um, <laughs> just nice move right there. And uh, Belioski had enough. And we can see that, um, you know, basically the spirit of play against Benoni by White. Again, we're not looking at the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're not looking at the actual lines, but we're just talking about the general <coughs> character of the play. <coughs> basically, White wants to, to curb the activity that uh, of Black. Black wants to be real active. Black wants to open, open, <laughs> open files, play a6, b5, all this stuff. Um, have knights hanging on c5 and e5, at least in the in the modern minority, you know. And um, you know, playing g5 and just, you know, just creating all kind of um, chaos and um, fogginess in a position, you know. Uh, not create, not allowing the position to be clear. For, for white to just find his way white is trying to play in a total opposite direction is have everything be clear and just exploit the weakness that's left over and we see I uh, saw a perfect example of that by Kasparov he slowly just stopped the activity from black traded off pieces when necessary and then black is just left with a bunch of uh, weaknesses uh, F f5 square here h6 um, knight on a6 is doing what? We don't, we're not sure about it. <clears throat> we don't know. So, anyway, in conclusion, that's the end of our discussion of the match 1983 between Kasparov and Abeliovsky. Of course, we know that Kasparov went on to achieve the greatest of greatest heights in the chess world, uh, becoming uh, the world champion, world chess champion. Not uh, 1984, though, it would take. A uh, whole, a whole another match <laughs> against uh, uh, Karpov. Two, two matches from Kar uh, from Karpov. The rest of the title from him, and then uh, Kasparov would then hold that title for forever. It seemed right from 1985 all the way up to uh, 2000. So, I mean, he had he had a heck of a run. But what can we what can we take from this match against Belyovsky? How can we can, you know, conclude the match. I think that um, Belioski was well prepared. Um, however, however, he was not prepared uh, for change. And what do I mean by that? That um, once Kasparov switched to the Tarish, it seemed like he, Belioski had nothing for uh, for him. Um, he was well prepared with his his black setup against d4 with his um, Tartakawa system. Again, 
once he faced adversity, once once Kasparov cracked that, he had not no plan no plan B. So he was well prepared in plan A. But once plan A faltered, he had nothing he had nothing to go to after that. Um you know, the, the evidence in this game with this Benoni, that he he had nothing once the Tartar cow was 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 cracked, that was it. And once um he couldn't do nothing against the Tarish, you know, and again he probably didn't prepare for it. That was a wrap. And then after softening him up, softening um Belioski up by hitting him with the Tarish, then he went to his main his main opening that he had been playing with which is the King's Indian and um you know, beat beat Belioski again with the black pieces. So he basically got him on tilt and then just like um uh knocked him around. So um, you know, interesting interesting uh match uh to go over and great play by the young Kasparov. Remember Kasparov was like twenty or twenty one at this time. So he's not even that experienced, but he has enough um people around him who are experienced and believe me, Kasparov had a uh team of helpers at that time a, a large was uh even coming up because you know they already knew the guy was extremely talented promising so he already you know was getting the stipend from the government and had his helpers and stuff so all of that combined with his talent you know so i'm sure the older guys gave him some you know strategy tips and how to you know play against belioski and stuff and um you know, it showed in in the match because Belioski was extremely strong player at the time. Um, you know, thirty years old, and um, he just uh, could not could not deal with the uh, direction that uh, Kasparov uh, took the match in. So that's my conclusion. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, don't ever have trouble finding any of the videos. Just go on my playlist, and you'll see all the videos in chronological order by match and i have many candidates matches up now if you like tau go check out some tau uh, candidates matches i got a non first drev and you know i'll be putting up uh many more so enjoy them please like and subscribe and uh i'll see you on the next video